Who needs a printout? What? Everybody got their sword with them? Oh, new books. Okay. Okay. If you get them when they're fresh off the press like he's got right there, anybody need an extra, anybody need a book? Yvonne's got one. Get you one, Nancy. Get you. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. We're doing good this morning. Got books right out there, right off the press. And uh, I woke up this morning, looked out and saw that weather. I didn't expect a little bit of snow with it. It's that old dry powder stuff. I don't think it's going to do anything. Uh, we actually, we have more people this morning <laughs> than we have on a normal morning. Now, figure that one out. But nevertheless, it's good to have you in here. And I hope and I pray that you have prepared your heart at home all week long so that when we get here on Sunday morning and we do Sunday school, that you can plug into the Holy Ghost as with everybody else should be able to plug in because we've made the soil of our spirit good ground to receive good seed. So this morning... It's good to be here, and it's good to see everybody that is here. So I pray that you have looked over your Sunday school lesson. I know I need to try to make it a habit that uh, if you don't have a booklet to tell you in advance, uh, like next last week, what this week's lesson will be. That way you'll have the opportunity to go through it and look and see what uh, the lesson is going to be about. I'll give you a heads up on that. But uh, they, I didn't do that last week. I think we ran out of time last week. It was going so good. And then I found out that I had five more minutes and I could have finished the lesson. But uh, anyway, we're uh, here again this morning. Brian has had to be out of town. And this was to be his opening uh, uh, cycle here. But nevertheless, he helps me when I'm in need. And I try to help him when he's in need. So... Uh, we can help each other, and that's the way it should be. So uh, this morning, we got a new cycle starting, and uh, wow, this is a great this is a great booklet here this morning. Uh, we're looking in the spring quarterly. That means it's right around the corner. Winter's over with, deer season's over with. So I'm ready for the sun. I'm ready for warm weather. So. Uh, before we get started, let's invite his manifest presence. Folks, we know God is everywhere at all times. We know that. But he only manifests himself where he is made welcome. And how many times have you personally and individually come into God's house and you didn't get your mind right and your heart right and you left just like you did when you came in. We came in God's house. We went through the motions. But he didn't show up, did he? Because we didn't prepare our hearts to be good ground, to receive the good seed. Because we reap what we sow, don't we? So this morning, let's invite the Holy Spirit here Let's invite him to come in and warm our hearts with the anointing because when he comes and the anointing shows up and he gives light in our hearts, then we can plug in to the revelation of God. We can plug in to the anointing of God and all of a sudden things that we had never saw before. Boom, there they are. We see them in here, not in here. Because when we get them in here, then they become a part of who we are. And it becomes us. And we grow line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. So we grow in the kingdom. And we become more proficient for the Lord. So let's go before the Lord in prayer and invite his manifest presence. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're all able to be here this morning, O oh Lord. And that we've had the opportunity... And you've given us the ability, and you've given us the favor, Lord, 
to be able to stand here in your house to take part in the kingdom of God and to be able to share the word, Father, in your stead. You've even gave us of your spirit to be able to see and hear and know and understand this word, which is spirit and life. So this morning, oh God, we're believing that the anointing is going to show up in this house. Oh, he is here now, the anointed one. The Holy Spirit is here now, and he is manifesting himself in our hearts and in our minds. So this morning, Father, we gladly embrace you and we invite you openly in this place this morning to fulfill your glory and change our hearts and our minds and transform us, oh Father, more than what we were when we came in so that we leave we're greater than what we were in the name of the lord jesus christ open the eyes of our understanding give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you in the name of the lord jesus christ amen folks i felt i felt the holy spirit move in he's here he's ready to manifest himself he's ready to anoint not just me but we're all one body aren't we we're one body in him, so if he wants to enlighten me, I'll gladly take it. And if you've prepared your heart for him to enlighten you, he'll give you light to revelation this morning. Okay, let's look at this. We started a new quarterly on Jesus Christ in the Gospel of John, which happens to be my favorite gospel in the New Testament, probably my favorite book because it talks about prayer and it talks about the Holy Spirit. It talks about Jesus being God here with us. And this is the first of five out of a series of five. And it's Jesus, God incarnate. God revealed himself to mankind in and through and by Jesus Christ. In other words, when they saw Jesus, they saw the express image the mirrored reflection and the express image of who God the Father was, didn't they? And that's what we're going to see here this morning in the Scriptures. And like I said, if you prepared your heart at home by your personal time and your personal study all throughout this week, then these lessons will come alive to you because you've prepared your heart and you, like Emerald says, let's kick it up a notch. So if you want to kick it up a notch, then we have to kick up the consecration, don't we? In our personal time with God in our secret place. Now, we've made it kind of a thing here to, to see who would like to take the golden text and uh, through their worship time, through their memorization, through their meditation, that they've hidden that word in their heart. So who would like to give that? It don't have to be just one. Two or three of you can do it if you want to. It's up to you. Does anybody want to quote the golden text this morning? Beside Nancy. <laughs> That's good. That is such a power-packed word there. When you understand the insight within some of these uh, Greek terms, these words that are... In the original Greek translation, these verses of Scripture become so powerful. Now, going into the lesson, it says that today's lesson goes to the heart of what Christians believe about who Jesus Christ is. He is God, isn't he? We know that to be that he is God. He's the eternally begotten Son of God who became incarnate, simply meaning he took upon him flesh and blood and lived as a man, Jesus the man. And because we believe this, we worship Jesus Christ as God who was with the Father and was with the Holy Spirit in the beginning when they created all things. And we know that for a fact because the Scripture says so. The incarnation has such a profound significance on our lives that if we truly believe that the incarnation occurred, then we can't ignore that, can we? That it happened. So this is so momentous for us that it's unavoidably life transforming it's so life transforming and that we know it to be such truth the proof that Jesus was incarnate is when you got saved you went from darkness to light you went from a dead disconnected spirit from God to a live plugged in Holy Spirit of God 
and you walked in the newness of life. So you know that to be true, don't you? Because you have His Spirit dwelling inside of you and you know that you know that you know that you're not the same person you used to be, don't you? And that's the fact. That is the fact and that is the truth also. Now, it's generally believed that John the Apostle wrote the gospel late in his life around A.D. 90 while residing and ministering at Ephesus. And John's gospel is focused on bearing witness of Jesus as the eternally begotten Son of God, the Savior of the world. And John intended his gospel to appeal especially to Gentiles in the Greek culture. Now listen to this. This sums up the gospel of John for me. John 20, verse 30 and 31. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, he says, that you might have life through his name. So, to me, that sums up the Gospel of John right there. I mean, it tells us that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed Son of God, and that we might have life through His name. Now, if Jesus was not God incarnate, then who was He? Because many people try to make Jesus less than who He was. What was it? Two or three cycles ago, we uh, studied the writings of, John, of uh, Paul, and throughout the different writings in the epistles, we saw that these false teachers tried to creep in and tried to make Jesus less than deity. They just wanted to make him to be a, a great teacher or a preacher, but they didn't want to give him the title of deity. Well, we saw that. Well, Christians, as Christians, we cannot accept Jesus less than being who the Gospels, who the New Testament, and who the Old Testament uh, prophecies profess him to be God the Son the incarnate Son of God the Messiah Christ the Savior of sinners so we can't see him any less than that can we now let's go to John's gospel over here in John chapter 1 this is such a a good book I love it uh, not everybody likes the same readings and the scriptures because uh, there's a lot of different ones. It, it's just according how God speaks to you and, and during a time frame in your life where the Lord speaks to you through certain, certain scriptures at different times. But here we are. Uh, the Word made flesh. Who would like to open with John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2? Okay, it says, in the beginning was the Word. Now, does that sound familiar to another scripture? Genesis chapter 1 and 1. I believe that's intentional here that John's showing a point here that he wants to show through scripture, through the Old Testament, and that we know, we already know who he's talking about. We know he's talking about Christ, don't we? But this was intentional here. It says, in the beginning was the Word. Just like in the beginning, God created. Well, that was intentional because I know I can only go back so far in my mind and then I get to where I can't comprehend. So there's no other way to say it other than in the beginning. So he's going back to where it says God created and he's using this intentional phrase to show a point here. He said, was the Word. Now, that frame or that fr uh, phrase there, Word, uh, simply means uh, the Logos of God, which means thoughts, His attitudes, and His reasonings communicated or spoken. Now, before Jesus became incarnate, He was in spirit form. God is a spirit. So, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there wasn't a body. So, it says He was in the beginning. The Word was in the beginning, and the Word, in other words, the thoughts, the attitudes, and the reasonings of God was with God, and the Word, the Logos, was God. So Jesus was in the beginning with the Father, 
and the proof that he was he must have been there before the beginning which proves his eternal his eternal deity in order to show that he was there in the beginning so just like the bible says that it's the revelation of God's nature and character and will Jesus reveals the nature the character and the will of God just like this Bible does it's the spoken word of God conveyed in verbal form or in on page so that we can receive the word of God and it can change our lives and receive the word so anybody got anything else they want to add to this okay Oh, a tone. I didn't know what you were saying. Okay. Yeah, the, the word, the spoken word. <laughs> okay. Now, we're going to look in something here, and like she's saying, we're going to look at something maybe a little different angle than any way that you maybe have studied or, or looked at it before in this next read here. And I'll try to slow down to, to get it really get the gist out of this. We'll be looking at John verses 3 through 5. Then we're going to skip and go up to verse 10. Not all those in between, but we're going to do 3 through 5 and then skip and go up to verse 10. Who wants to read that? Okay. Now we saw that Jesus, before his incarnation, he was with the Father. And in other words, when God breathed, he took a breath to breathe, then Jesus became the expression of the Father, right? That's the word. That's what logos means. The thoughts, the attitude, and the reasonings of God's heart was communicated. I'm not trying to split hairs, but that's, that's essentially how it was. When God the Father drew a breath to breathe, Jesus became those words spoken in faith. And in an instance, like he said, and God said, let there be light. And so when God breathed breath, that means spirit, when he breathed the Holy Spirit, Jesus became those words, and they went forth, and light was manifested. So it says here, all things were made by him. Now, you can't see words, can you? You can hear them. You can't see them. Well, Jesus, he actually said in John 6, 63, he said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So Jesus was speaking the reasoning, the thoughts of God's very heart. Now watch this. It says, all things were made by him, by Jesus, the spoken word, and without him was not anything made that was made now look at this it says by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth the ruach the breath or the spirit of God God is a spirit isn't he okay so like that like I said when God the father drew breath Jesus became the expressed thoughts and intents of his heart he was the very word that God spoke now Let's go on. Look at this. In him was life, the zoe, the spirit life of God, and the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. What do you think that's saying? The life was the light. Anybody care to plug into that? The life, L-I-F-E, was the light of men. Paul said it this way. Uh, he said in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, he said, I has not seen, 
ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But he said in the next verse 10, God has revealed it unto us. How? By his spirit. So apart from having the spirit of God in our lives, we cannot understand spiritual meanings, can we? Because we're a spirit, if you will, when Adam rebelled and sinned, he become just like an extension cord. He became unplugged from the light of God. So when we got saved, we got plugged back into the light. The light was the Holy Ghost. The power source was the Holy Ghost. So it says, And in him was life, the Holy Ghost, the life of God. And that light was the light of men. That revelation light, the light went off. If you turned off all the lights in here, and I took a flashlight and turned it on, what would you see? You'd see revelation, wouldn't you? You'd be able to see light. It's simply illuminating. That's what the Holy Spirit does. When we get saved, He illuminates the word that we hear. And being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, the word of God, the logos of God, we're born of that word, that seed. And the Holy Spirit, when we hear that, the Holy Ghost gives us light and we're able to receive and respond to that light. And it said, And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended him not. Listen to this of what Jesus said in John chapter 8, 43. Talking to the, the Pharisees, they were chiding him. Boy, they was trying to trip him up. And he said, Why do you not understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my word. He that is of God hears God's words, and you therefore hear them not, because you're not of God. So, in, uh, Paul put it this way. He said, If our gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are in darkness, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. And it says, Lest the light, the revelation, of the glorious gospel of Christ, the word, who is the image of God, should shine unto them, and they should be saved. So it takes revelation, and that's what he's talking about here, verses 3 through 5. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not, because he tells us up in verse 11, he came to his own, and his own received him not. Because he didn't come in the way that they thought he should, and also, it says he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Because simply of a prophecy that Isaiah spoken, he said they had eyes to see, but they couldn't see. They had ears to hear, but they couldn't hear. They had a heart to perceive, but they couldn't.
Did you get it though? Good. Good. Sure he did. Because you had the witness. That just the thing of it is, as we grow and progress in grace and in the knowledge of the word, we get more light. The more light we get, the more we're able to see. The more light, more revelation, spiritual. Not head, but spiritual. And when you get that in here, that light goes off by the Holy Spirit, revelation. And the more you get... Because Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, we have head knowledge truth about some things, but until that becomes heart knowledge, we're still in darkness on some things. So you got more light when you started coming here. Right. The Lord knows what he's doing. He's placing you in a place, in a position to where you can get light and grow and thrive as the garden of God. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, the more light we get, the more grace we get, the more revelation, the more understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have saw in my own personal life, just like you were talking about, that if I don't put this as 
first place priority, time in the Word. Now, the world reads the Bible. I've worked with a lot of men that just they read the Bible religiously. I do too. Yeah. I have found probably in my, and I use, you notice when I use examples, I use Jim. I don't use anybody else. But I've noted that it, it takes the study of the Word of God, and it takes, this is what it takes for Jim. I have to be transparent every day of my life with God and pour myself out before Him in brokenness. Now that's Jim. When I can do that, I become completely transparent because there's no walls, there's no face mask, there's no hat I'm wearing. I'm not trying to be this or that. I'm just being completely honest and broken, and God says those are the sacrifices that gets a hold of his attention, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And when I'm doing that, I am in humility, and this has stuck with me. He gives grace to the humble. I can't get enough grace. The more grace God gives me through prayer, submission to the Word, to the Holy Spirit, then the more light, the more revelation I get, and the more I grow, and I change from glory to glory, and I mature, and I just begin to come alive and be who God predestined me to be, Christ-like, a mature man in Christ, 
a mature stature of who Christ is. That's where prayer is a must. You take prayer out of the equation, it's God speaking to you, but you're not speaking back to him, and the cycle is broken. It's broken. It's just a dialogue. Yeah. Well, you're learning. That's the good thing. As we all do each and every day. And the more we learn, the more light, the more revelation, the more insight. The Holy Spirit said that he will take the things of Christ and show them unto us. And the closer we are to him, the more we're going to hear his voice. So, okay. Let's look at chapter, I mean, uh, verses 11 through 4. Ooh, we have gotten way behind. Verses 11 through 14. Who wants to read those? <laughs> I'm glad that she got some light on some stuff this morning. You know, sometimes we get off the, maybe it's from the voice here, but if you help somebody, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Okay. Now, as we've saw, that it takes the Holy Spirit to receive light. And it says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him, not because they rejected Him. They had eyes to see, didn't see, ears to hear, heart to perceive, and couldn't understand. Their hearts was made fat because He wasn't who they thought that He should be. So they rejected Him. But it says, As many as received Him, to them... Gave he the power or the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. His name. Now it says, which were born not of the blood, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. They was born of the word, and they was born of the spirit, just like we talked about in Peter a while ago. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The glory that Jesus had with the Father in the beginning, it was revealed. In other words, when you saw him, like I said, you saw the express. When you express something, what do you do? You speak it, don't you? So he was the express logos in thoughts and intentions of God's heart, wasn't he? So he became the expressed word of God, the only begotten, the incarnate son of God, full of grace, enablement, love. That word grace there is, is so vast. And truth, again, goes back to the word. Okay, now... Let's move on to uh, one more at least, and hopefully we can get maybe two more. It says, in verse 18, it jumps up to 18, and it says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom, ooh, I love this, of the Father, he has declared him unto you. Now look at this. Let's break this down. It says, No man has seen God at any time. And then John repeats that same phrase over in his little epistle, 1 John chapter 4. And then Paul confirmed it again when he wrote to Timothy in uh, chapter 6 of 1 Timothy. 
He says, whom no man has seen nor can see. And then we see that Moses spoke with God face to face. Out of the darkness, God spoke to him. But we also see that he couldn't see his face. Then we saw that Isaiah saw God high and lifted up in a vision. We saw Ezekiel saw God in a vision. And it says he was a fire from the loins up and a fire from the loins down. So he saw, he's been seen in visions, and uh, we also saw that he was in the form of a man. The form of the fourth man that he saw in the fire was like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar saw him, and then we saw how Jacob wrestled with the angel. And, and I believe that was a pre-incarnate visitation of Christ himself. And uh, we still... We see that no one has ever seen God literally as you and I see one another or physical objects. But we know here that He was made flesh and He dwelt among us. And it says, We have not seen Him but the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared Him unto us. In other words, Jesus in the bosom, in the heart of the Father... That's where the words are expressed and they come from, don't they? From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So from the abundance of the Father's heart, where Jesus was, in the bosom of God, he became, he became the very logos of the thoughts and the intents of the Father's heart. And he was revealed to us by the expression of his words when he came to speak to us. The Word of God. Jesus the man, the image, the exact representation of the invisible God was revealed unto us who God the Father is. Anybody got anything else they want to add to that? Okay. Let's go to the next read. John chapter 12. Let's look at verses 44 and 45. John chapter 12, verses 44 and 45. Who would like to read those? Mm. Okay. We can see these words here. Jesus was addressing to a crowd in Jerusalem only days before his crucifixion. And Jesus said to them, He that believes on me you're actually not believing on me altogether, but on him that sent me. In other words, he said, when you see me and hear me and you believe on me, you're believing on the Father who sent me. And he that sees me sees him that sent me. So that's pretty elementary there. Again, through Jesus' attitude, his reasoning, and his thoughts conveyed, he said, I have revealed the Father to you. Okay. Now let's look at verses 5 through 11. Uh, chapter 14. Go up to chapter 14. We'll probably close out with this. Verses 5 through 11. Okay, and we see here for months Jesus had been telling his disciples that he was going to have to go to Jerusalem, 
be crucified, buried, resurrected, ascend back to the Father. And here, Thomas was in a conversation with Jesus. Uh, Jesus here getting ready to go away in the opening of chapter 14. He tells him, don't let your hearts be troubled. I go away to prepare a place for you. And then Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? So Jesus says to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come unto the Father but by me. And he says to Philip, If you'd known me, you should have known my Father also. And he says, From here on out, you know him, and you've seen him. And Philip says, How, how do we know the Father? Show us. And he says, Have I been so long with you that you've not known me Philip again going back if you've seen me I am the express image in word and in deeds expressed of the father I'm a carbon copy I'm a mirrored reflection of who the father is in my thoughts my words my actions my intentions everything that he done and he said believest thou not that I'm in the father and the father in me and the words, there it is, the Logos I speak. I speak not of myself, but of the Father that dwells in me. He does the works. In other words, the works that he did through the words backed him up. He said, believe me that I am in the Father. He was the Word of God coming out of the Father. And the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. So, we can see here that Christ is the way to the Father. And we know that for a fact. And guess what, folks? Are you going to open the door on me? <laughs> oh, this has been good. I always have wanted to finish lessons. I've tried to be proficient in them. But when you have an interruption this morning to where the Holy Ghost shows up and He gives out some light and some people are changed, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? It makes it well worthwhile. <laughs> uh, so, Father, we thank you. It's been good to be in your house this morning. Your will, without a shadow of a doubt, has taken place. This study of your word and the input that others have given and the questions, Lord, that's been asked has been life changing and transforming this morning father and i thank you for it for that light that revelation has gone off in people's hearts and minds father they've seen truth truth by the power of the revealing of the holy spirit life and light from the holy ghost lord so we thank you for that father and we want to praise you and we look forward in the service to come here, Father, for greater things even above and beyond what we've seen in our hearts and our minds this morning, Father, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit through the Word. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen.